Okay, welcome to our lesson on four plan cut plane settings. 3D construction elements on the floor plan, that is walls, columns, beams, and roofs, are displayed as if they were cut horizontally or along a th theoretical plane. This is the floor plan cut plane. The fault height of the cut plane measured from the base of the current story depends on local architectural conventions but you can set any floor plan cut plane for the current window using the floor plan cut plane dialog box to open this use document floor plan cut plane click and that opens up your floor plan cut plane settings dialog box the cut plane does not affect the display of mesh slab or other objects including stairs however the stairs and other gdl objects can be programmed to display themselves according to the floor plan cut plane settings the floor plan cut plane settings are global the current settings apply to all the stories of the project once you set the global floor plan cut plane. You can further fine tune the floor plan display of individual construction elements, walls, columns, beams, and roofs only in their element settings dialog boxes. You can also set separate floor plan cut planes in different views. For every view, you can define a unique floor plan cut plane, if required, using the floor plan cut plane controls accessible from view settings. Okay, let's try to explain how the floor plan cut plane settings works. Um, this right here, where it says cut plane height to current story, showing us this red line here and that is currently set to four feet that means that what we're going to show on the 2d plan is cut at four feet and we will show anything below four feet and we will show it down to the current story and nothing below now this blue line up here gives us the relative floor plan range. It's currently set to zero. Being set to zero, they should probably even show it right down, down there at zero, which would be at the next floor level. All right, so let's see how this actually works in practice. I'll click OK. I'm going to put in another wall here. And we're going to make the height on that say uh, say 22 feet. And we're going to make that a slanted wall. And we'll put it at say, uh, say an 85 degree angle. Okay. And we'll run that across the building here. And it looks like a very thick wall, but let's see what happens when we click it. Okay, now you can see here where the bold lines are. That's the wall where it's cut at the four foot cut plane. And this line here that I have the Mercedes on now is where it actually meets the floor. And these grayed out lines here actually are the, uh, are the top of the wall at 22 feet. Okay, now if I have the wall selected and right click and go into the wall selection settings, and I click on floor plan display we'll have some options here projected projected with overhead and cut only right now we've got projected with overhead if we selected projected and clicked OK Then the top of the wall disappears, and you can see that we've got 
just a cut plane in where the wall meets the floor. Go back into wall section settings. If we select cut only and click OK, that's going to show us where the wall is cut at the floor plan cut plane only not giving us any kind of an indication that the uh, that the wall is sloped so we'll go back into floor plan display and put it back to projected with overhead that gives us a much better indication that the wall is sloped. Uh, let's see what else we can do with wall selection settings. Okay, when uh, when projected with overhead is selected, and we go down to outlines, we've got. Uh, We've got overhead line pins, which is a solid line right now. If we were to change that and say pick a dashed line, click OK. Then the top of the wall is shown as dashed lines. OK, now if I were to select this wall and go into wall settings and Let's change the fill pattern on that. Let's give it a composite wall. We'll make it EFIS on 8 inch CMU. Click OK. Now with our uh, floor plan cut plane we're at 4 feet, if we were to make this wall instead of 10 feet, say 3 feet, watch what happens. Indicating that this wall is below, now below the cut plane. Now if I put that back to, say, um, 22 feet. You can see that we're getting the uh, the fill through the cut plane. Okay, if we go up to the second floor, we're not seeing anything. Okay, why is that? Let's go back down to the first floor, and we'll select the walls. And we'll go down to floor plan display. And we have an option here to show on stories. So right now, we've got that selected as home story only. If we click on all relevant stories and click OK, we'll go up to the second floor and you can see that the walls that go up through the second story are shown on the second floor plan. Go back to the first floor. Take a look at this in 3D. Okay, one other thing that will affect how a wall that's drawn on the plan looks is if we go and double click on the wall tool and we say current story instead of automatic, click OK, and we draw a wall.
you'll notice that when we go up to the second floor that this wall here which we've selected to show only on the first floor will not show on the second floor show all in 3d okay now if I select that wall and go back into wall selection settings select automatic and make sure we have it on all relevant stories click OK we'll go up to the second floor and now we see that on the second floor which is one of the relevant stories that it passes through one other setting that we should take a look at here if I select this wall I go into the wall selection settings we have another option here which is show projection and generally speaking we probably want to show the projection on a particular floor only where it intersects the, the top and the bottom of that floor so right now we're showing the entire element if we go to floor plan range and click OK you'll see that now we're starting the wall here we're cutting through with the floor plane and this line shows where we intersect with the second story.